Welcome back to Blau Dev, everyone. Today we're going to be going over custom reusable widgets in Flutter and how you can use them to reduce the size of the code in your project. Let's get into it. So as you can see here, I've already shelled out a base project with a bunch of different widgets. We have a sign up page, we have a sign in page, um, and if we go to these, we have some text form fields, we have buttons, um, and just some simple navigation. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a custom widget that we can place into this page. The purpose of this custom widget that we're going to be building is to factor out a bunch of code that's found on multiple pages. So for this example, I'm going to specifically be focusing on a custom button widget that I'm going to be creating. And so we're going to use it for sign in and we're going to use it for sign up. And realistically, you're probably going to use the same button in various other areas of your application. Um, styling is going to stay pretty much the same and the main focus of this custom widget is going to be on padding and sizing and coloring um, so it's a lot of styling type of stuff that we're going to be customizing here now you can apply these same principles to anything you'd like if you have an idea for you know a bar chart or a pie graph or um, some particular list view item type um, you can create a custom widget in the exact same manner in which we're going to create this one, but I'm going to use a simple button to illustrate the point and make it easy to understand and grasp. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import uh, package material. So it's package flutter slash material the dart. And I'm going to create a class called custom button. And this is going to be a state less widgets and as you can see here it's throwing an error right now and that's because we're currently not returning anything inside our widget build override so I'm gonna go ahead and create that instead of throwing an error we're just gonna say return container for the time being okay the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna establish what inputs the user is gonna give so the only thing that's going to be different between the different views in this case, because the rest of the styling is going to be fairly consistent, um, is going to be the uh, input text. Okay, So let's go ahead and add that. That's going to be a string. And we'll call it input text. And then we're going to do const custom button. this dot input text okay and so now this is already going to be kind of functioning how you would imagine other widgets to function um, other widgets and, and what I mean by that is that you know when we call a widget they have different properties that we can access and use so let's go ahead and find where we use a button on one of the pages let's scroll down password okay here we go so this whole thing right here is what we're essentially going to be copying so I'm going to cut that I just want to mark where I'm going to be using it and we're going to go back here paste and in place of sign up, we're going to say input text. Okay. Now let's see what else we have here. We could take in a custom width if we'd like to as well. So if you know we want to give the user uh, the ability to um, give a certain, um, or we, let's just use height for example. Uh, we'll say height. This dot height, and then for height, we can say height. Then if we go to where we're going to be implementing it, you can see here that it wants us to, well, let's import it first, and we're going to say height is going to be 44, and input text is going to be, let's see, we're on the register page, so it's going to be sign up. Okay. 
So you can see here, you know, similar to other widgets, we have these different values that we can plug into it. And that's how that connection works. You create a stateful widget, a stateless widget, or it could be stateful, depending on what you want to do with that widget. Um, you establish the values that you want to allow the user to input. You create your initializer for that, and then you build your widget. So when we call on it, what it's going to do is it's going to return what's ever um, in here. In this case, it's returning a container widget with a bunch of different operations inside. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is let's go ahead and give this a hot restart. And we're going to see if the sign up button looks correct. So we're going to first go to sign in so we can check to see what it originally looked like. So it looked like this. So if we did this properly, we should see pretty much this exact same layout for the sign up button, but with the word sign up instead. And there you go. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add this exact same thing to our login page. So I'm going to copy our custom button. I'm going to open up our login.dart page, find the sign in container. And you can see here, this is lines 25 through 41, so 16 lines. 16 lines being replaced with four now. So we've saved ourselves 12 lines in each file that we put this. And so you can see here, it dramatically cleans up the tree, the widget tree. And typically I do not recommend doing custom widgets or even you know factoring out a widget because Let's be honest, there's not a whole lot that's custom about this particular widget other than, you know, we've got a height and text and that sort of thing. It's pretty much just, you know, a widget tree that we pulled out, that we factored out. Um, but there's a very good chance that your widgets are going to get more customizable and you might want to use them in various places. I personally do not recommend factoring out or creating a custom widget unless you use it in two or more different places, ideally three or more. Otherwise, you're just spending a lot and a lot of time trying to refactor code constantly and not getting much done with your project. If you've got the time, by all means do it. But I recommend waiting till you have about two to three or more uses within your project for that particular set of widgets. So the last thing we wanna do, all we need to do is just change this to sign in. Give it a hot restart. Let's go check in the sign-in page. Still there, still looking good. sign up, still looking good. And there you have it. We have now created our own custom widget. We factored out a bunch of code, saved ourselves a lot of time. And this is the basis for um, creating custom widgets and reusable widgets that you can use in your project. You can expand this and go way more beyond with this. Um, I've used some pretty complex custom widgets in my own code at times but that would take a long time to demo and go through. So I wanted to keep it very simple for you guys just to see how it works. And basically, you know, it's the same as any other view, you know, we created a new class, you know, we have inputs, we have an object, a widget that's returned and it displays something on the screen. It's simple as that. If you found this video useful, make sure you click that like button and subscribe to the channel for weekly Flutter contents and I'll catch you guys next time.